Greetings. This is Doc Ock here at Black Facts Headquarters Central. I know all of you haven't been with us from the very beginning, but that's okay. Even if you're just showing up in the ninth inning, it's better to be here than to be somewhere else and not even be in the mix. Because you know the people out there have been playing all kinds of tricks on us. Not just white folks, not just black folks, but people in general, whether they be Americans or whether they be Russians, whether they be heathens or whether they be saved, the truth has yet to be told. Now, I said when I first started this, doing these uh, live streams, that I was going to bring y'all something, some information, some education, and some culture. Unlike anything else that you've ever seen anywhere else on the internet and today, oh, we're taking it up a notch. We're going to shift gears. That's right. I'm down here double clutching. Yeah, that's right. I know how to double clutch for all you truckers out there. I know just how to do that. Okay. I can drive my car with or without a clutch. It don't make me know never make that car go. So let's make car go. That's what we're going to do right now today. Let's start off slow, and I'll bring y'all in one step at a time. This particular live stream is going to be a, it's a special. I know I didn't announce it. It's an unannounced special for the holiday because today is going to be more than a holiday for you. If you're right here with us now, you, it's going to be more like a holy day because you're going to remember this day. So here we go. Proverb for today. A cutting word is worse than a bowstring. A cut may heal, but the cut of the tongue does not. Let me say that one more time. A cutting word is worse than a bowstring. A cut may heal, but the cut of the tongue does not. And I forgot to write that one down to say exactly or give you a general idea of where that one originated at. Uh, we know it's an African proverb. But I did forget to write down the country that it came from. But I know it was a really long one. Let me see if I just see it right here real quick. And I'm not seeing it right now. But um, neither here nor there. It's a good one. And it's appropriate for today. So we're going to move on anyway. So let's go ahead and move on to our poem of the day. And today's poem is Offer It Up. By Brother Gil Scott Heron, the incomparable Gil Scott Heron, who has him along. Oh, here it is here. OK, cutting word. May he, ah, that was from Mauritania. OK, let me mark that because I got to write that down in my book here. Mauritania. And meanwhile, let's go ahead and get it on from the book. So far, so good. Let's go ahead and. Knock on wood. See what we got going on today. This is an old poem written back in the 1960s. It's an oldie, but a goodie. Some of you old heads out there may recognize it because this is one that was on his albums. And here we go. The revolution will not be televised. You will not be able to stay home, brother. You will not be able to plug in, turn on, and cop out. You will not be able to lose yourself on Skag and skip out for beer during commercial because the revolution will not be televised. The revolution will not be televised. The revolution will not be brought to you by Xerox in four parts without commercial interruption. The revolution will not show you pictures of Nixon blowing a bugle and leading a charge by John Mitchell, uh, General Abramson, and Spiro Agnew to eat hog malls confiscated from a Harlem sanctuary. The revolution will not be televised. The revolution will not be brought to you by the Schaefer Award Theater and will not star Natalie Wood and Steve McQueen or Bullwinkle and Julia. The revolution will not give your mouth sex appeal. The revolution will not get rid of the nubs. The revolution will not make you look five pounds thinner. The revolution will not be televised, brother. 
There will be no pictures of you and Willie Mays pushing that shopping cart down the block on a dead run or trying to slide that color TV in a stolen ambulance. NBC will not be able to predict the winner at 832 on reports from 29 districts. The revolution will not be televised. There will be no pictures of pigs shooting down brothers on the instant replay. There will be no pictures of pigs shooting down brothers on the instant replay. They will be no slow motion or still lives of Roy Wilkins strolling through Watts in a red, black, and green jumpsuit that he has been saving for just the proper occasion. Green Acres, Beverly Hillbillies, and Hooterville Junction will no longer be so goddamn relevant. And women will not care if Dick finally got down with Jane on search for tomorrow because black people will be in the streets looking for a brighter day. The revolution will not be televised. There will be no highlights on the 11 o'clock news and no pictures of Harriet Arm women liberationists. And Jackie Onassis blowing her nose. The theme song will not be written by Jim Webb or Francis Scott motherfucking Key. Not sung by Glenn Campbell, Tom Jones, Johnny Cash, Engelbert, Humperdinck, or Raw Earth. The revolution will not be televised. The revolution will not be right back after a message about a white tornado, white lightning, or white people. You will not have to worry about a dove in your bedroom, the tiger in your tank, or the giant in your toilet bowl. The revolution will not go better with coke. The revolution will not fight germs that may cause bad breath. The revolution will not kill COVID-19. The revolution will not put you in driver's seat. The revolution will not be televised, will not be televised, will not be televised, be televised. The revolution will be no rerun, brothers. The revolution will be live that's right and those words could never be truer because here we are right now today the revolution will not be televised for one very good reason because the revolution will happen in your mind before it occurs to your behind to get on in line and put yourself in action as a matter of fact the revolution will happen in the mind first. And that's why the revolution will not be televised. Now that I've given you that blast from the past, we're going to raise a flag up the mast and see if anybody salutes because we're coming right black to our topic of the month, which is the West. We call it Black West. That's right. We're going Black West with Queen Calafia, Queen Calafia. All right, going black west with Queen Calafia. Now, yesterday or previously, we talked about Queen Calafia on a number of other occasions. Um, but not only did we talk about we talked about Queen Calafia, the fictional Queen Calafia, and we talked about her relationship to the real female warriors from Mali that went with uh, Al-Haji uh, Mansa Musa to Mecca and imp so impressed the people on their 9,000 mile journey that they, they, their memory, the memory of those women continues to make waves all the way into the present, okay? including the naming of the state, the great state of California. That's right. The state of California is absolutely named after Queen Calafia. So what we have here, this looks like from at first when I saw this, I thought this was a real image. But as I look at it again now, I realize this is a three. This is some 3D art right here. OK, because this is what my brother does. My brother, Daryl, he does 3D art. And it looks very similar to some things that he has done. And it's an artist rendition of one of Dahomey's so-called Amazon warrioresses. Okay? So these are black women that were soldiers in an army or in a, a regiment 
that fought alongside men for the um, the king of Dahomey, the emperor of um, the emperor of Mali, Mansa Musa. We talked about Mansa Musa, so obviously it was happening before he got there, and it was still happening after he was gone. Okay, so even though that one, that first image there was a 3D image, and if you notice. You just take a good look at the implements she has here in her hands. I know that's not the best picture. I'll get you a better rendition. Uh, but right now, this is the best I could I could pull up. Okay. You see here, she has what we call a panga panga. Panga panga is what we call a machete. Okay. Machete is a tool, a work tool used all over the continent for uh, chopping cane, uh, anything in these chopping bush. And, you know, you're going through the brush. Okay. You use what we call a panga panga, otherwise known as a machete. But it's also a battle implement, okay? It's a tool of war as well. Obviously, it can be used however you want. And then over here, you see a, uh, 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 at that time, would have been a modern rifle. And the, the time period we're talking about is in the 1800s, uh, early to mid, let's say, 1800s, okay? Now, here is an actual photograph of one of these Dahomey warrioresses, okay? Not a queen. She's a warrior. She's not a queen. Don't even get it twisted, okay? Because she ain't going to be running around wearing no crown, sipping no tea, or uh, knighting anybody. She is a knight, okay? She's a knight that will fight for what is right. So you best not mess with her because she's got a lot of might. And if you, if, you, if you don't act right, she'll have you all tight. So you best be cool as a rule. So that was a picture of one there. I've got a number of pictures I'm going to go through here. I'm going to try to go through them as rapidly as I can, but it's going to take me more than my 15 minutes that I've allocated for myself here. And then you see here another photograph of two actual uh, Dahomey. I call them the Dahomey warrioresses, okay? Dahomey, or you could call them a Dahomey Amazon if you like, but, you know, them some bad sisters, okay? Now, if you notice here the difference in the war impl implements, okay? The one here has a has the rifle right and the one over here has got two long blades i believe those are an early version of what i just showed you a minute ago panga panga so when you talk about a blade that will cut you quick mm, yeah you best be cool with them girls cuz uh they don't play that they don't play that that's right what's that song y'all remember that song we used to sing back in the day uh, mama's going to knock you out. Yeah, in this case, mama wouldn't knock you out. She would actually chop your head off, okay? And so these Amazon, these Dahomey, I, I'm going to keep going with Dahomey. These Dahomey warriors were so fierce. The men hated, absolutely hated to have to go into battle against them because it was yeah, considered to be a, like a mark of shame if a woman just kick you dead in your natural, okay? Sent you to the fatherland. Yeah, where well you could rest in peace. That just wasn't a good thing. Now, you see here with her implements, see, I always pay attention to the details. Now, you see what she's got here, this thing going up here? That looks to be a club, okay? Uh, we have a name for that in Zimbabwe. I can't recall it right right out the... Oh, Nobkedi. You throw your Nobkedi across the river. Okay, that looks like a knob cutty right there because it's got a big knot on one end and then it's a stick going down here. And then she's got a couple of short daggers over here. So she's got the rifle, she's got the short daggers, and she has what looks to be a form of a knob cutty as well. Okay, uh, albeit that one is a um, a very, uh, what's the word for it? Refined version of a knob cutty. Okay, usually they're not that, that refined. Okay, now this is one where it really starts to get interesting because I was looking at this today um, just a few minutes ago when I was printing these out. I looked at this and I said, golly, look at that. Always pay attention to the details. Always pay attention to the details. The details really tell the story. If you can see up in there, Okay, I don't know if you how well you can see, but you see right over here, there's a brother with a drum. Okay, and that looks like a dun dun. Remember, we're in Dahomey, which is you know or Mali, Dahomey Mali area. 
Okay. And then over here, what is that? Right over there for all you djembe drummers out there. There's two brothers. All They're all women there, except for those two brothers, the only men I've noticed. The one over here, right over there, and the one way over here. And that is a djembe with his kasinka sinks on there and everything. And we all know that the, well, some of us know, the drummers amongst us know that the djembe was used in battle. It was like a signal drum. So when you hear that, that's for a reason, okay? It's, it's designed as a signal drum to signal the soldiers what to do. Or, you know, if they had them up high on a hill, those drummers could indicate what the other, the opposing forces were doing and which way they needed to go. Tell them, go whichever, okay? But, oh, there were a couple more men back there in the background. So these women, oh, and going down the side. So these women did fight with the men. So you can see the men going down the side over here. You can see them going down the other side over here. And then they're going across the back. But in the center, right dead center, those are the women. Okay. Yep. Those are the women right there in the middle, in the thick of it. Okay. Here's another one here. And again, you can see the brothers with the drums. Okay. And you see this one over here. That's got, he's got his djembe, but it's got it. The djembe is laying down. Well, you see the straps right there to put it over the shoulder. And then over here, you see the dun-dun drum. Okay. So again, um, we see some things in reality that we've been imagining as we go about uh, engaging in African drum and dance. Okay. So for all you drummers and dancers out there, if you weren't aware of, of, of these kinds of uh, um, situations of the drum, the drums being used in. Now you're aware. And then here we have one. This now these are some of these. Uh, many of these are from postcards. So these were actually made into postcards and sold and sent all across Europe. So or all around the world rather. So you can imagine the kind of fright that this put the fear that this literally put in people's minds. Because they weren't used to getting out there and soldiering like this. If you recall, we were reading about Cathay Williams. I said there were about 400 women that um, were in the Civil War, but they all had to dress up as men and pretend to be men. They could not let it be known that they were actually women. In this case, no such thing. Everybody knew. All right. King Gezo, he knew that he had these uh, these fierce Women, formidable women. Now, uh, we also on a, I believe it was uh, on a, I know it was on a previous segment. We also had dealt with these ancient faces. Okay. And I, I was later able to print out some more images that I wanted to share with you that are similar to those heads that were found in South America. We call them the Olmec heads, O-L-M-E-C. Olmec heads. Well, here we have one that is not an Olmec head. This one happens to be from, I believe, Cambodia. And the thing I want you to notice there are those tight curls on the head of this Buddha, because that's what this is. This is an image of Buddha. Look at the tight curls on the head. As I said to you previously, for those of you who were have been have been paying attention. In um, Japan, the Buddha has to have 626 of these tight curls on the head. Now, many of you are uh, using those uh, sponges with the little holes in it, and you do like this, and it makes your hair, quote unquote, makes your hair curl up. Okay, if your hair is kinky and nappy like mine, you don't need that. Okay, that is piece of equipment is superfluous because you don't think Buddha had one of these back in the day, right? Y'all know that, right? He didn't have one of those. So, and he wasn't sitting around twisting up his hair into 626, six little knots. That's just how our hair grows. So our hair is actually our crown. When we cut our hair off and go bald, when we um, when we fry it, dye it, and lay it to the side, we are actually taking off our crown 
and relinquishing our heritage. Ooh, how about that for a word? Heritage. Why do you think they call it heritage? Think about it. Don't stink about it. I told y'all it's going to come with some stuff y'all ain't never heard before. Okay. But maybe you have. Maybe you heard some things I never heard. Hey, who knows? If you did, let me know. Send a comment. Meanwhile, still in Cambodia at Angkor Wat. Okay. Check these uh, statues out here. I don't know if these are supposed to be Buddhas or not, but there's a whole row of them. They're going all the way down the line here, all the way to the rear. Okay. One right after the other. Look at the wide nose, the thick lips. And if we, if we, if we see their hair, you would see those same tight curls again. So those curls are important. Our naps, our nappy head is important. So if somebody calls you a nappy headed nigga, well, next time somebody calls you a nappy headed nigga, here's what I want you to say. You'll be a, I'll be a nigga and let, even if I don't get no bigger, and if you don't watch out, you might have to call me triggered because you don't want to be horsing around with me. Okay? That's right. Because those nappy headed, nappy, those nappy naps, that's our crown. And so all those royal crowns that we see of Europe, those European style royal crowns, etc., they use what? The gold that we were that we were mining in Mali and shipping out all over the world or across the Sahara. That was the gold they made the crowns out of. And the crowns were designed to imitate our hair, our hair styles from all the way back in Egypt. I, on another occasion, I'll show you some pictures of the ancient Egyptians and their hairstyles. And then I'll show you some pictures of some modern day uh, uh, Watutsi with the very same hairstyles, very same hairstyles. OK, as these Egyptian crowns. So crowns and hair go together. Why do you think they call this part of your head the crown? Put it all together. They're giving us the clues, but we're not picking up because we're busy. So busy. We've been so busy gaslighting ourselves. It's time to start setting setting things right and uh, discontinuing all this gaslight. OK, let's see what we got over here. Let's see what we got here. We got a question. Uh-huh. 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 Right. Yeah, Frederick uh, Shortridge. Yeah, that's who I was just talking about. I just went through. I didn't mention the king's name, but I did mention the king of um, Dahomey. So the images that I showed earlier are related to what you're talking about there, that, that uh, king that they call, some people call the king shark. I'm not sure how to say his name, which is why I'm not saying his name, because I didn't really want to want to mess up the man's name. And then here we have the old Mac head that you can compare with those ones we just saw from Cambodia, from Angor Wat. OK, coming out of the Wat. There you go. Now, uh, I'm going to go ahead and see. I don't think I have any. Well, oh, you know what? I do have another image I want to show here because it's also important for this identification piece. I'm just gonna show you one more image and then I'm gonna go ahead and uh, clock out. Let's see where the other image is. Here's one here that gives you an idea of the size of those Olmec heads. You can see a full grown man squatting next to one, gives you an idea of how big those heads are, okay? These are some huge heads, all right? And then still looking for the best image I got here. Ah, no, that's not it. I should have one better than that. Let's see if I got one more better than that. Oh, shoot. I don't thought I had another one. Okay, let's see. Oh, well, this one here, that almost gets it. Let's see if I get any better than that. Nope. I think that might be it. Let me see here. I'm looking for the side image because I want you to see. You know what? Here, I use this one here. This was not a very good image. But it does show, it's, it's blurry, but it does show you an earring, what they now call gauges, that we see all kinds of people, you know, engaged in some kind of modern cultural whatever you want to call it. Some people call it appropriation uh, with what they now call a gauge going through his ear. 
So this could be a, a piece of bone material. Uh, if we were in Africa, I would say it looks like a piece of an elephant tusk. Could be a cow horn going through the man's ear, but it's Egyptian style. Because when you look at Pharaoh Tutankhamun, he's got that big, he wears those big earrings. And you can see that there's a huge hole in his ear, okay, which we see frequently in different parts of Africa. But you also see it all throughout South America. And this is going to be a recurring theme. We're going to return to the theme later on in terms of the cultural um, the, the cultural similarities between people from South America and the peoples of Africa. And I've experienced in, this in the reality myself when I lived in L.A., okay, riding on the bus and playing my music and have people saying that they thought that that instrument sounded like one from where they're from. And they were all from south of the border. Now, so we're just trying to get a few things in order and um, de uh, uh, decrease some of the disorder that we've been seeing, engaging in, and being a part of here in America. So I hope you have um, been inspired because I don't want you to just take what I'm saying for granted. I want you to go look for yourself. You can Google all these things that I've been sharing with you. Many of these images I found myself on the internet, but you always have to be careful as to what's written along with the images. Sometimes they're, the information is accurate and sometimes it's not. So you always have to, um, what's the word for it? Triple check your facts. Triple check. That's a new word. Triple check your facts. Don't just double check. Triple check your facts because some people have come to their own conclusions about things which may or may not be correct, including myself. So there you have it in a nutshell. Don't take my word as gospel because it's possible I may have got something wrong. And if I have, share with me what you know, and we'll compare notes and see what conclusions we can come to. Meanwhile, this is Doc Ock saying, have a good day. We're going to keep on doing it in a very nice way. We'll be black here tonight at 9 with stories for the children on Black West, because we're going Black West. We're going Black West. We had one last night. We did one last night, just for those of you who missed it, on uh, Charlie Willis, who's one of the early progenitors, one of the progenitors. That's the father of country Western music. So Lil Nas X, yeah, he should have got that award. But they wouldn't, I don't even think they let him in the contest good before they kicked him out saying he couldn't get the award because his music wasn't country enough. But if he's the descendant of the father of country music, why are they excluding the brother? He's just trying to take him to the next phase his daddy would have took him to if he was still with us. Or I should say his great, great granddaddy. Let me be more accurate about that. All right. So look for us again. We'll be in the wind. Meanwhile, we do need some support. Uh, we're, we're having a, a, we're in the midst of our fall fundraising campaign. It's all 2020, 2020, 2020, 2020. We're trying to raise $20,000 by September 20, excuse me, $20,000 by September 20th in the year 2020. But it's a, it's a four day piece. So it's, we're going to do this in September, October, November, and December. We'll do this for four months. Don't wait around to the last minute to tally up your donation. Go ahead and make a donation now. Even if you can only donate $1, $1, we will get the entire dollar. There will be no percentage taken out. There's no fee, no per transaction fee or anything like that. And you can use your credit card. So because you can use your card, do it right now. You might as well. Anyhow, don't wait till the last minute when the network goes down because of the voting crunch or COVID-19 or whatever. Don't wait till then. Do what you need to do now so that we can continue to make presentations like the one we just did today. And as I said earlier, this was a special presentation. When we come back tomorrow at noon, we'll be back to our regular uh, time frame, 10 to 15 minutes. We're going to hit it and quit it. All right. Peace out. Now, we'll, we'll oh, look for the links below. The links to make your donation are right below. 
do not donate to my GoFundMe page. I'm trying to discontinue that. We've having some disputes with GoFundMe. But it, so in the meanwhile, go ahead and donate right here on Facebook. And if you can't do that, go ahead, share our video with a friend, a, a family member, or even an enemy. Turn an enemy into a frenemy. You can give us a thumbs up on, on YouTube and subscribe. So that we that will, because that will help us thrive. And we'll have more information on other ways that you can help out financially as time goes on. Peace out now. We're gone.